I could just ask everybody to please mute uh, yourselves for the, the time being. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I put together a, a presentation for everybody to hopefully help share some of this information uh, with you all. So let me go ahead and share that. Can you all see the, uh, the screen? Excellent. Okay, good morning. Uh, this is the pre-bid meeting for Parks Maintenance Services categories D, E, and F. It's RFB 2103. I am Tim Selke. I'm the Park Services Manager for the City of Carlsbad. We do have a few uh, city staff with us today. We have our Parks uh, Superintendent, Bill Chrisman. Uh, Park Supervisor Timogen Matsubara and our Senior Contract Administrator Shea Sines, who will uh, speak to you all a little bit later and give you some information on the bid submittal process. I'll just kick it off with a timeline of, of um, milestones here, critical dates for the RFB. It was released on January 28th. Um, today is the mandatory pre-bid meeting, so this meeting is uh, being recorded this morning. If uh, anyone could not make it, a link to the video will be posted on the city's website and they can watch the, the video afterward. It is a mandatory uh, meeting and I'll speak to that in a moment. Uh, we are accepting written questions until February 25th at 2 p.m. Uh, that is the deadline to submit questions. Afterward, we will um, provide written answers to all questions that have been received and they will be uploaded to Planet Bids by 2 p.m. on March 2nd. RFB submittals are due on March 12th by 2 p.m. Uh, again, uploaded to Planet Bids. <clears throat> all questions um, that you might have, so we're not gonna answer any questions uh, today. All questions regarding the RFB should be in writing uh, and submitted via email to me directly. Uh, my email address is on the screen. It is also in the uh, RFB document. And again, questions must be submitted by February 25th uh, at 2 p.m. The submittal process is, as I just mentioned, through Planet Bids, that is e-bidding. So the RFB is available on the city website through Planet Bids. You must be registered as a document holder to receive updates and notices <clears throat> through Planet Bids. So if you are not already uh, registered, please be sure to do that. On page three of the RFB document is a, a form, guarantee of good faith. So there is no uh, bid bond associated with this project, uh, but this document is required to be completed and submitted. You'll see there on the screen and in the bottom left corner uh, of the document, it says required amount none. This document also serves as uh, recognition or acknowledgement by the contractor that they have either A, attended the meeting now, or B, watched a video of the, of the meeting. And so therefore this document is required to be completed and submitted, signed and submitted with your submittal. If it is not, it will void your bid. So I'm gonna go through some sections, some highlights of this RFB um, with you all this morning. This is not all inclusive. I'm not gonna go through every uh, line by line. I do expect that anybody who is interested in bidding that they take the time to review the, the document thoroughly. Um, review it. If there are questions, please submit them to us. But I will highlight uh, certain areas that I think I need to draw your attention to that I think will be beneficial to those uh, who are bidding. So this is not meant to be all, all inclusive or exhaustive, but just a highlight. So um, as I mentioned before, we are currently soliciting bids to provide comprehensive parks maintenance services. This is for categories D, E, and F. They are passive parks and facilities landscapes, streetscapes, medians and parkways, undeveloped park sites, urban forests, and trails. The purpose of this bid is to obtain competitive pricing for these categories. You can bid on the category if you, if you meet the qualifications, if you have the ability to provide the specified services. Um, the city will consider contracting with a contractor that's proactive in its standards and can meet the qualifications in the RFB. This would be a best value evaluation uh, of the bids. It is not strictly based on cost. Uh, the city's goal is to have a successful contractor providing these services starting on Monday, June 14th. And the con initial contract is a two-year term with up to two additional two-year optional extensions. 
Uh, in the past, Carlsbad residents have consistently indicated a high level of confidence in city government, uh, specific to libraries, parks, safety, and other services. 95% um, of residents polled are satisfied with the quality of the city's parks, and 89% of residents satisfied with the city's trails and walking paths. Obviously, it is our goal to maintain those high marks and to increase them if possible. Likewise, you know, Carlsbad operates in a lean manner. There are high expectations for value, accountability, and transparency. It is important to continuously assure that taxpayers are receiving the most efficient and cost-effective delivery of services in the city, and that is our goal with this RFP. If you turn, starting on page seven is the table of contents, uh, category A. Scope of work category A applies to all of our maintenance categories. So that would be the three that we're currently bidding here, D, E, and F, as well as our other two maintenance categories, C and B. I'll go through a few highlights of category A. Section one, the general requirements. Uh, contractor accepts the sites of services in their present physical condition and agrees to make no demands upon the city for any improvements or alterations thereof. Contractor shall, during the term of this contract, respond to all emergencies to the satisfaction of the city within one hour of notification. Contractors shall perform weekly maintenance inspections independently and a monthly maintenance inspection jointly with the city during daylight hours of all areas within the scope of this contract. And I will touch on um, inspections in a little, a little bit further on uh, in this uh, review. The city takes stormwater pollution prevention very seriously. Uh, we have a really st a strong track record with the Regional Water Quality Control Board. It's our goal to continue to maintain that. And through this agreement, the contractor shall incorporate and comply with all applicable stormwater pollution best management practices during the course of this contract. All services are to be in compliance with the most recent San Diego Regional Water Quality Control Board permit, the Carlsbad Jurisdictional Urban Runoff Management Plan, and Carlsbad Municipal Codes. Any of those documents can be found, uh, are, are on file with the city and could be provided if needed. Contractors to have and maintain a valid C27 contractor's license throughout the term of the agreement. The license must be in good standing for the previous five years without any unresolved record or complaints filed with the California Department of Consumer Affairs. Additionally, there's a requirement of two certified landscape irrigation technicians per category. So here we have three categories for bid. If contractor was to be awarded all three categories, that would equal six certified irrigation technicians assigned to the category crews. This is a 365 day a year contract. It is seven days a week. The hours of maintenance are generally from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. There is one exception. And as you'll see here, that is from April 15th to October 31st for work category D, Passive Parks Coastal, and work category E, Streetscapes. The hours of service shall be extended from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. daily. And on three specific holidays, holiday weekends, Memorial Day, 4th of July, and Labor Day until 10 p.m. The purpose of this is obviously to address needs along the coast. We have seven beach accesses along Ocean Street that are captured under uh, category E streetscapes, there's downtown parking lots, the Carlsbad Boulevard right-of-ways, as well as the category D passive parks along the coast being Maxton Brown, McGee, and Cannon Park. This is to address needs from high, you know, visitation services throughout the summer months and especially on the holidays. So please pay careful attention to this. Contractors shall within 30 days uh, submit work schedules to the city for review and approval. These schedules shall identify the operations and timeframes for their performance and can be updated on a quarterly basis thereafter. It may be possible that the city uh, ends up taking on an additional area for, um, for inclusion into a contract after a contract has been awarded. So this section six expanded scope of contract just speaks to 
uh, how expanded work would be awarded uh, to the contractor if that was to be necessary. Uh, likewise, the city does reserve the right to use uh, other outside forces to perform work if it is at their uh, best interest. There are also times when we would like to have other projects done that are outside of the scope of work of the contract. These could be uh, landscape enhancement projects, it could be irrigation retrofit projects, tree plantings, uh, those types of things. And that's what we consider extra work. Um, extra work is typically proposals are requested from the contractor. If the city agrees, uh, we can sign off on the extra work proposals uh, up to $60,000 and the contractor can then begin the work. It is to be understood um, that when the contractor is performing extra work, it is not uh, at the expense of the regular or routine maintenance tasks, that all of that regular and agreed upon maintenance work is continuing and extra work projects are in addition to. If there's a condition that the city deems urgent that requires uh, extra work to be performed immediately, uh, we can accept a verbal estimate uh, for that work and provide a verbal authorization so long as we get written confirmation within 24 hours after. There is, as I mentioned before, an expectation of response to uh, emergency situations that may occur. So during the term of the contract, it is expected that a single telephone number with a local San Diego regional area code uh, is provided to the city for 24 hour a day, seven day a week emergency contact. Um, additionally, if you wanna use an answering service, uh, that is fine so long as the city gets a return call within 30 minutes of the original call. The inspections and meetings and reports. So the contractor and the city will inspect all sites on a monthly basis. We have uh, four parks inspectors who are assigned to our different scope of work categories, and they're available five days a week uh, to work and to assist uh, the contractor with any needs related to this, these projects. So that inspector will meet with the contractor on a monthly basis, and they will walk all of the sites uh, that are under that section or that, that inspector, and they will evaluate the site conditions and document those site conditions. Additionally, the contractor is to meet at minimum weekly uh, with the city to review the schedules, resolve problems, perform additional field inspections as required. So the city has an inspection rating system that we use. It is called Intellex. Uh, this system is used by our inspectors and our supervisors to document site conditions. It's a way to communicate those um, the observations of the inspectors to the contractor and for the contractor to communicate back to the inspector supervisor uh, what actions they are taking uh, or what the plan is for resolving any items that might be outstanding. During the monthly um, inspection meeting, city inspector and the contractor will walk the sites. They will discuss the work that has been done over the previous month. To avoid deductions from payment of services for individual sites bid amounts, the contractor must receive a total of a 95 rating for the technical specifications applicable to the respective site of the contract and for the general specifications of the contract. The rating for each site shall represent the total percentage of the technical specs and general specs in the contract that were met by the contractor during the preceding month of service. And this conversation will occurs with the contractor and the inspector during each site visit each month. Obviously, safety is extremely important to the city, as I know it is to all of you and your operations. So it is expected that the contractor would perform all of their duties in a manner to meet all accepted standards for safe practices. Um, these are city parks. These are uh, public facilities where the public is going to be present while your operations are occurring. So it is intended that the contract will not appear, interfere with the public use of the premises and will conduct its operations to offer the least possible obstruction and inconvenience to the public or disruption to the peace and quiet of the area within which the services are performed. There is a local noise ordinance, it's 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
So the contractor uh, shall not use any power equipment prior to 7 a.m. or later than 7 p.m. except under emergency circumstances. Obviously, if a tree falls and we need to run a chainsaw to cut it up uh, out of a median or uh, in a park after 7 p.m., we are able to do so. That is just the exception, not the rule. Section 19, uh, use of pesticides. <clears throat> All work involved in the use of pesticides shall be in compliance with federal, state, and local laws. Um, the city of Carlsbad did adopt in 2017 a new integrated pest management plan. It is an organics first plan. So I highly encourage you all to review it. It's attached to the RFB as Appendix A. It is our intent to follow the uh, IPM plan as written. So please do review it. Um, it is like any IPM is a progressive plan. It doesn't uh, ultimately outlaw or ban anything, but certain um, certain tools are at the far end of the spectrum and are very unlikely to be used, specifically glyphosate. Section 1906, contractors shall prepare and submit a schedule to the city detailing all proposed pesticide usage for approval. We do need to see and have a plan for, for pesticide applications uh, specific to school sites, or in this particular case in category D, uh, parks adjacent to school sites. We need to be cognizant of the Safe Schools Act of 2000 and be um, sure that any applications are performed during school closure times only. Likewise, we need to uh, have advanced notification to the school district that would be coordinated through your parks inspector. Section 20, disposal. All landscape debris shall be disposed through a landscape material recycling center or reused in some manner. Landscape debris is not to be disposed of in the landfill uh, without written approval from the city. The use of city dumpsters is not allowed. The, the uh, city would not be responsible for any disposal of landscape debris or any other debris. The contractor is responsible for it and is to pay all disposal fees. There are a variety of records and reports that are required on a monthly basis, um, specifically a monthly project report. This report is to be submitted to the city monthly, indicate the overall condition of the sites, uh, any specific, uh, specifically unusual problem areas. It should also include any actions to be taken by the contractor uh, to resolve these situations. Additionally, there's green waste and recycling reports uh, there are pest, uh, pesticide use reports, as well as playground safety audit reports. I'll jump into scope of work category D. This is the passive parks and facilities landscapes. Uh, much of what I go over here applies to both, to all three categories. So when we get into E and F, I won't get into as much detail. As I just mentioned, these uh, passive parks do have playgrounds, so a contractor shall possess a certified playground safety inspector certification. We do require the playgrounds to be inspected each month and for a report to be submitted to the city at the end of each month. Again, contractor acknowledges personal inspection of the areas and has evaluated the extent to which the condition will affect services provided. Contractor accepts the premises in their present physical condition and agrees to make no demands on the city for improvements. There is a specification for uh, turf renovations one time a year, according to a schedule established by the city. Irrigation maintenance. So the city will provide or reimburse the contractor for irrigation parts, heads, or other irrigation system equipment that exceeds $500 per month with the city's approval I will let you know that support documentation is going to be required for these reimbursements. And there is no markup associated with this. This is a direct reimbursement for the cost of the price of the, of the material. How uh, a, a contractor chooses to, to do their, their job is up to them. How they get parts and how they manage parts is up to them. Um, so there will be no markup associated with this. The contractor will provide all the labor and the equipment for maintenance of the irrigation systems. Irrigation system testing is a weekly frequency. 
and could be more frequently if problems or conditions indicate the need. Section 10, inspect, spot, treat, or mechanically remove weeds as necessary. This is a weekly frequency. In this agreement, contractor is responsible for tree work within 15 feet of the ground. I put this next section in there about deadheading the flowering plants. Uh, as you may or may not know, the Bird of Paradise is the city of Carlsbad flower. It's on our seal in our logo. Uh, it is something that is, uh, I guess, very well respected in the city. And we do like to see that our planters, specifically the Bird of Paradise planters in the medians, um, which is, there's quite a few, are deadheaded, are maintained free of spent blooms, flower stalks, and et cetera. This is a bi-weekly frequency. Mulch, a minimum three inch layer of approved mulch shall be maintained uh, at all times. Contractor can submit a specification for a substitute mulch. Our current approved mulch is MB Organics, Carlsbad Stump Mulch. We have reviewed other types of, of mulch in the past, but have not found anything that met uh, our, our specification. So that is the current approved mulch, although the contractor can submit a specification in the, indicating a different mulch for our review uh, if they would like. All landscape areas shall be maintained free of disease and insects. Um, the city should be notified immediately if any of these conditions have developed. Section 1304, contractors shall eradicate or remove bees, ants, rodents, and other pests. I bring this to your attention because we do not eradicate bees. All bees are live removals. So please make note of that uh, when you're considering this. Uh, we do not kill bees. <clears throat> we do not eradicate bees. Leaf litter and debris control. All litter, paper, glass, trash, undesirable materials are removed once daily at minimum from the sites. Supplemental policing, litter pickup, hand sweeping, and other areas is also at minimum once a day to ensure a neat appearance, but also circling back to stormwater pollution, uh, best management practices, keep our areas neat and tidy. Damaged bare, thin turf is to be overseeded, sodded as required to maintain the specifications. All trash receptacles are to be checked daily and emptied whenever they are more than half full or as needed to prevent objectionable odors and unsanitary conditions. Again, all trash, green waste, accumulated deb debris shall be removed from the sites immediately and disposed of by the contractor at a legal waste collection site. Walkways, steps, hard surface areas, curbs, gutters, parking lots shall be cleaned, washed, including but not limited to the removal of all foreign objects, gum, food, drinks, spills, grease, paint, graffiti, etc. as needed but at a minimum daily. If graffiti cannot be removed by cleaning or washing, the contractor shall immediately paint those affected areas with the material approved by the city. Drinking fountains is a daily frequency. Clean, disinfect, clear the sand traps if needed. Damaged uh, decorative or delineation bollards, rails, fencing. Um, these shall be repaired or replaced as needed by the contractor. The city will provide or reimburse the contractor for materials that exceed $6,000 per year with the city's approval. And again, supporting documentation that shows the uh, expenses incurred. Contractors shall inspect picnic tables, benches, slabs, barbecues, tot lots, trash receptacles at minimum daily Deficiencies are the responsibility of the contractor shall be corrected immediately. Other deficiencies shall be reported to the city. Dog waste bag stations are to be kept stocked and clean in good condition at all times. At no cost to the city, the maker and type of dog waste bags shall be at the approval of uh, the city. And we can certainly provide you with um, information on which ones we've used in the past. Again, stormwater pollution prevention devices these are to be in place at all times. They're to be cleaned or replaced by October 1st each year and as often as needed thereafter. The city will provide or reimburse the contractor for materials that exceed $6,000 per year. Blockhouse and portable restrooms. 
Uh, the contractor shall unlock all park blockhouse restrooms between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. The city, uh, we have an overnight janitorial service that cleans the, the blockhouse restrooms. Uh, they come and they will lock the bathrooms uh, each evening. Blockhouse and portable restrooms shall be restocked, cleaned, and unclogged by and at the expense of the contractor as needed to ensure safe and sanitary use by the public, but at minimum twice a day. Again, if there's graffiti in the bathrooms and it cannot be completely removed by cleaning or washing, the contractor shall immediately paint the affected surfaces with a material approved by the city. There is a uh, minimum maintenance frequency chart uh, in the RFP document. I just uh, have a picture of it here. This is not an all-inclusive chart, but it does give uh, some, some good information on the frequencies associated uh, with the specifications and each of the, um, the tasks. So as a cheat sheet, you could use it to, to at least uh, to look at, put a copy of that there. Scope of work category E. Uh, streetscapes, medians, and parkways. Much of what I just went through uh, in category D is in the specifications for E and F, so I'm not going to go through each of those things again. <clears throat> Please take the time to, to read the document and understand um, what is there. I'll just call to your attention a few things here. Um, as I mentioned, there is the downtown public right-of-ways. There are five downtown public parking lots. There are seven beach accesses along uh, Ocean Street. The Carlsbad Boulevard right-of-ways um, from Pine Avenue down to Cannon. Uh, those are all included in these scope of work categories. We recently uh, had those seven beach accesses uh, renovated. Um, they are very have been very nicely done and we do have a, a high expectation that those are continue to be maintained. Um, in, in good order. So please do pay close attention to this downtown public right of ways. This is the village area. This is the downtown. If you drive through there, you'll see an abundance of trash cans. There's um, raised planters. There is a fountain. There's a lot of benches. There's uh, hanging baskets. Um, please pay attention to these things as they're all included in this scope of work category E. Again, contractor <coughs> acknowledges personal inspection of the areas. Please make sure you get out and take a look at them. Um, irrigation and watering, all landscape and turf areas are to be uh, irrigated. If they're not irrigated, it is still the responsibility of the contractor to deliver adequate moisture to these um, landscape areas. In addition to weekly testing, all irrigation systems shall be tested and inspected as necessary when damage is suspected, observed, or reported. I think uh, irrigation testing and maintenance is a huge uh, responsibility, and I'm drawing your attention to it for a reason. Weed control. All areas shall receive dil diligent control of weeds. Uh, when talking about the medians, there's a lot of trees uh, in the medians that are staked. Some are even uh, guy wired, so please pay attention to that. It is included, it is incumbent upon the contractor to maintain tree stakes and guy wires where they're used. Again, flowering plants and the deadheading of flowering plants, uh, specifically the birds of paradise, as I mentioned earlier, but all other flowering plants, that's a, a, a minimum frequency bi-weekly. Three inch layer of, of mulch, uh, throughout the sites, leaf litter and debris control. This is uh, increasingly um, needing attention in the medians, uh, picking up debris, trash in the medians. There are certain areas that tend to uh, accumulate a lot of trash, specifically those uh, on the route to the trash transfer station. Uh, so please do pay attention to the frequencies here. Uh, increase in frequencies of cleanups for seasonal plant defoliation or cleanup after storms is the contractor's responsibility. Again, sweeping, washing of hard surfaces, same as in category D. And again, stormwater pollution prevention best management practices. Scope of work category F. This is your undeveloped park sites, urban forests, trailheads, and planters. Again, all the information that was previously covered is included in here. 
Um, these undeveloped park sites, urban forest, and trail services under the contract shall be performed in accordance with Carlsbad's open space management plan, habitat management plan, preserve management plan, and our community forest management plan. I put here again, <laughs> I think you got the message, all stormwater pollution prevention devices, BMPs, are to be maintained by the contractor and in good order at all times. These undeveloped park sites and urban forests, the goal of this section 18 is to reduce the ongoing fire threat in accordance with open space management plan and our stormwater protection program. So contractors shall remove fire hazards or fire nuisances by the following mowing, hand labor, and or other equipment services as approved by the city as needed, but at minimum semi-annually, once between October 1st and November 30th, and once between March 1st and April 30th, generally. Those dates are subject to change dependent upon conditions. If we have a really um, super dry year and not a lot of growth or vice versa, we may want to amend those dates. But please note that those uh, services, the mowing in these undeveloped park sites and urban forests is at minimum semi-annually. Uh, there are trail areas that are listed in this agreement. Eroded damaged trail areas shall be regraded to base grade, ruts and rivulets filled in as often as needed to establish the trail surface in an even smooth finish. The cost of all related materials, including but not limited to DG, class two, sand, gravel bags, et cetera, shall be the contractor's responsibility up to $6,000 per year. Again, another maintenance, uh, frequency chart here for your uh, review. Again, doesn't cover everything, but it is a good resource. I'm going to just jump into the last few sections of the RFB. Um, I'll give Shay a chance to talk about the submittal process. So uh, this will be a best value evaluation. So bids uh, will be uh, reviewed based upon objective and other predetermined criteria that may include but not limited to cost, conformance to the solicitation, suppliers' qualifications, past performance, customer service, and warranties. It is possible that the city would award one or more contract on the bids submitted, uh, whether by award of all items to one contractor or award of separate items or groups of items to various contractors, uh, depending on how the bids come in. Uh, and, and how the, the contractors, some may want to bid on all three categories, others may only want one or two of the categories. So uh, depending on what we receive, we'll determine how the contract is awarded. Uh, there are a couple uh, you know, items of note here, conflict of, of interest, um, contractor warns to the best of his or her knowledge that the submission of the bid will not create a conflict of interest as described above. Uh, there is a clause of termination um, for default. While we do not intend to have to ever use this, uh, it is in there. So please pay attention to those details. There is a list of all the submittals that are required um, with this RFB. Again, right there, number one, contractor's uh, guarantee of good faith. Please go down the list and check off and make sure that you have uh, captured everything that is listed on this list of submittals. If you don't um, submit everything, your bid is considered to be non-responsive and will be thrown out. Shay, would you like to speak to the uh, e-bidding process and planet bids? Yes, thank you, Tim. Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for attending. It's nice to see uh, such a well attended uh, pre-bid meeting. Um, my name is Shay Sines. I work in the city's purchasing department and I help facilitate the use of planet bids in our bidding process. Um, just a couple of key things. Uh, again, just to confirm uh, the due date is March 12th at 2 p.m. I would encourage you to start uploading early, earlier. Uh, sometimes it can take some time, you know, relative to your internet speeds, et cetera. So give yourself enough time to upload the documents. Essentially, you'll be uploading two documents, uh, the bid package, 
in a, a PDF form and uh, financial statements, those will be separate. So you'll be essentially just uploading to PDFs. It should be very simple. If you have any questions regarding uh, the use of Planet Bids, please submit your questions uh, by the question due date uh, to uh, Tim and myself. Um, just to reiterate uh, some key things to remember the guarantee of good faith document, which is page three of the bid packet must be included uh, and signed by the um, appropriate individual in your organization. Uh, also, please note any addenda that are issued while the bid is still open. We have had one addenda, uh, addendum issued. Please make a note of that and any changes relative to the bid packet um, and any future addenda that we may issue. Um, Again, just the list of submittals, section 57 is very helpful. Uh, that's on page 87 of the bid documents. Uh, make sure you've got all those items included. Um, and please uh, review our contract documents. If you have any questions regarding our contract requirements, uh, feel free to email Tim and I as well and we'll get those answered for you and get those answers uh, posted. Um, I think that's about it. Thank you for your time today. And thank you for your interest in doing business with the city of Carlsbad. Thank you, Shay. I appreciate that. And yes, I'm gonna to touch on just a couple additional things here before we wrap up. Again, this is the schedule of activities. It's in the bid document. So please uh, do look over this again. Uh, services start date June 14th, 2021 is the goal. There are a few appendices. So I mentioned the uh, integrated pest management plan that is there. As uh, Shay just mentioned, there is a sample agreement uh, in there that you can look at. Uh, it's not to be completed or filled out. It's just there for your reference to you know, aware of what the agreement looks like. And then appendix C is the um, contractor's proposed cost of service. That is your bid sheet for each of the three categories. As Shay mentioned, we did issue um, an addendum. This is for the Buena Vista Reservoir Park. So uh, that addendum included a PDF document of the plan sheets for the park. This park is currently under construction uh, in the beginning stages of, of construction. So uh, you're welcome to, to drive by there and, and look at the site, but you'll not see much but a graded pad um, currently. But the plans do show the irrigation system layout. They show the amenities uh, throughout the park. Um, enough, I feel, to be able to give you a good idea of what your the scope of work would be based upon the specifications. Uh, the size of the site is about three acres. Um, so please review that. And there is a bid item listed on the bid sheet for the Buena Vista Reservoir Park. Again, um, the, the park is not expected to be it might be complete by June uh, if everything goes well, depending on weather and any other unforeseen circumstances. I think it might likely be a little bit past that. So there's a chance that the um, contractor would not immediately start taking on this, this work. Uh, it would be with notice to proceed from the city. And again, last bit, just pay attention to the uh, cost of services charts are there for each of the three categories um, for you to complete and submit. And that does it for me. Again, just for one last time, these are the, the milestones, the dates, the due dates, March 12th, uh, 2 p.m. for your bid submittal. So thank you all for joining us. I'm, I'm very appreciative you took the time uh, to join us today. If there's any questions, please do send them my way. Uh, Shay and I will make sure that the questions get answered uh, and uploaded to Planet Bids so that everybody can see them uh, and everybody gets the same information. So. Thank you all again. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, everyone.